We just made this full metal Iron Man gauntlet complete with a repulsor using a photon beam generator. Check out the destruction it did. Plus, we're gonna have a giveaway for this awesome helmet. This video is sponsored by Honey, the easiest way to save money. Everyone wishes Iron Man was real, but for some reason, no eccentric billionaires have stepped forwards. I'm looking at you, Elon. Now, I'm no billionaire, but I am eccentric. My team and I are building a real Iron Man suit. Well, pieces of it anyways. So far, we've made the world's first full metal Iron Man helmet complete with a heads-up display. We've also made a rather electrifying arc reactor. We've also made a full metal Iron Man gauntlet complete with a plasma cutter capable of cutting through one inch thick steel. We also have our own version of Jarvis running the automation in our facility, as well as Dummy the Robot. So on this episode of Make It Real, we'll be building Iron Man's other glove, complete with a real life repulsor. Let's get started. Step one is to make the gauntlet. Months ago, Bogdan and I designed and built the first metal Iron Man gauntlet while stuck in our facility during the initial weeks of the pandemic. Thinking about it now, that's not unlike Tony making his first suit while trapped in a cave. I mean, I guess our facility is a bit nicer than a cave though. In case you missed that episode, here's how we did it. We started by using Pepicure files for reference of an existing cardboard Iron Man gauntlet. Then we explored them into our CAD software to modify them to suit our design. Once we were happy with the 3D model, we exported all the flat patterns into a DXF format in order to plasma cut the parts on our CNC plasma table. After cleaning up the parts, we were able to intricately fold the metal pieces, just like origami, and then weld the seams together. To make the glove strong and to protect your hand, we opted to use a chainmail glove instead of a fabric glove like most Iron Man gauntlets. This resulted in an Iron Man gauntlet that's both dexterous, but also strong and light. Easy, right? But this time, we want to take it one step further. So we're actually going to be sending this out for professional ceramic coating in titanium gold and hot rod red which will not only provide strong abrasion resistance, thermal insulation, and make the surface super hard, but it's also accurate to Iron Man lore. Throw a little hot rod red in there. Yes, that should help you keep a low profile. Pretty cool, right? Now, that is gonna take a while. So in the meantime, let's talk about the real tech behind Iron Man's repulsor with something called a muon. What is Iron Man's repulsor anyway? In fiction, it's a high energy muon beam with two power modes a low power mode capable of pushing things back using a shockwave, which has actually been done by Alex Lab in Russia. He used hydrogen gas and an igniter to create a small shockwave. The other mode is the high power mode, which causes utter destruction, our favorite pastime. Which means we need to create an Iron Man glove capable of causing destruction. Now, creating a muon beam is no trivial matter. It can actually be done using city-sized particle accelerators that use entire power grids to generate muon beams. But even they are not powerful enough to show what was demonstrated in the Iron Man movies. Thanks a lot, science. Now, unfortunately, my particle accelerator is at the shop for repair. So we're gonna have to sell it for the next best thing, a photon beam generator. Luckily, we just so happen to have one of the highest power continuous wave collinear photon beam generators available to industrial research facilities like ourselves. In other words, I managed to find another module on eBay after chatting with Styropyro. This little module is 200 times more powerful than the highest laser classification rating, class four. Even a class two laser is capable of burning your eyes out. At 20,000 times brighter than a class two laser, that means even looking at the spot of the beam produced by this can cause instant blindness. Sound fun? And of course, it's capable of burning pretty much anything. Now we've actually used this module for a few projects now, including our militarized half-scale cyber truck, and more recently, my Civil Warrior arc reactor shield. Oh. <laughs> for both of those projects, we just used the laser module as is, without any focusing lenses, which means it wasn't that destructive. This time, we're gonna be using a little optical engineering and utilizing a few different lenses to maximize the power of this little guy. But one of the biggest issues with using a high power laser is the heat output. So far, we've relied on a large water cooling loop to make sure the laser doesn't burn out. But this time, we're going fully custom and making a much more compact water cooling system. And we're even gonna miniaturize the laser driver that Styropyro gave us that we used in previous builds. I'll start on that cooling system and Bogdan is gonna start miniaturizing the power system. But first, a word from our sponsor. 
I don't know about you guys, but these days, I do literally all my shopping online, which is why I use Honey, the free browser extension that scours the internet for coupon codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. It works on over 30,000 sites. It's how I save $5 on this awesome Iron Man Mark V helmet. Hello, Jarvis. Pretty cool, right? We're actually gonna be giving away one of these helmets. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is fill out the form below and install Honey on your browser. Plus, my fans who have already installed Honey from previous videos have found over $338,000 in savings. That's crazy. And since the laser we're using is so dangerous and you need to wear special laser goggles, I've actually modified one of these helmets to include laser protection. Whoa! The laser driver that Star Pyro sent us has been working great, but I think we can make it smaller. Luckily, he also sent us a schematic, which means we can design our own printed circuit board. I'm going to be using Altium Designer, as it's the industry standard for PCB design software and it's super powerful. They also have Altium Viewer. It is a free electronic design viewer that allows you to view and share all kinds of file formats. All right, the circuit is all done. Time to start laying out the PCB components. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now uh, we just need to maybe add a Hacksmith logo and we can get it sent out for fabrication. Perfect. Now, a lot of you have been asking why we don't have our own PCB mill yet. Well, it's because websites like JLC PCB allow us to make these really high quality printed circuit boards in a matter of days, completely hassle free. And they're really affordable. So let's get this sent off and we should be able to start soldering soon. Well, that was quick. Guess it's time to start soldering. Charles, how the heck do you expect me to solder this? Fun fact, before I did YouTube full-time, I actually had two engineering jobs. I worked as a mechanical designer designing injection molding machines and a product developer designing digital projectors. In both of those roles, I actually did a lot of work with liquid cooling systems. And one of those companies was actually throwing out this rather nice coolant water reservoir. I mean, look at this. It's all machined aluminum, super soft. Anyways, this is, this is a really awesome reservoir. So I think we're gonna use it for the Iron Man project. The really nice thing is it's got these quick connect fittings. Take a look. These are leak proofs, which means we can actually disconnect the Iron Man glove from the cooling system without spilling any coolant. Before, we were using this stupid water cooling loop from a PC, and as you can see, you can literally like rip off the hoses. It's, it's not good. Anyway, the hoses connect to the small aluminum water block, which will interface with a repulsor module that Bogdan's prototyped a few units of. Let's build this up. All right, removing the thermal adhesive wrapper. Make sure I put this in the right spot. All right, that's not coming off again. <laughs> All right, so how does it work? On the back end, we plug in two batteries. This will run the system for about 10 minutes straight, which is pretty good, especially considering it's the highest power laser. Oh, it's this. I thought it was a 3D printer. So that's the sound of the reservoir and the fan right here, keeping the, uh, the driver cool. So on the other end, you can see that the fan is powered by the board from the batteries, which also powers the reservoir pump. That's the other neat thing about this. The pump is actually integrated into the reservoir. 
And then we have our trigger switch there. So basically if you put a switch in that shorts that, that'll trigger the, the uh, laser. This eight pin output here is for the actual laser and Bogdan's currently soldering up that connector right now. So your package has arrived. It's here. Woo! Nice. <laughs> you know, if you use a knife, uh, you wouldn't have these issues. Ooh. Whoa, red and gold. Damn. So oh. shiny. Oh. Oh. Nice. Good. Oh. Nice. Now the glove. It just my pinky. There we go. Ah. Wow. That is freaking sweet. Feels like Iron Man. Do that. Now we just need a. Alright. Now we gotta figure out what to put under here. More lasers and rockets? Maybe. And flamethrowers? Let's go put it together. Let's do it. All right, we've got all the parts we need to build our Iron Man Repulsor. So, let's get started. The first step is installing the laser into the Repulsor module. But before we do that, we're gonna have to clean it off. So the reason we're cleaning the lens is because the amount of heat and light going through this means if there are any contaminants or even oil or grease on the surface, it could cause the lens to like shatter, which we obviously don't want. capable of putting this on, I am done. If I'm not, we have to go back to the drawing board of the entire thing. Ha! Now, you guys might be thinking, Hacksmith, why don't you get a haircut so you actually look like Tony Stark again? To which I answer, I do look like Tony Stark. In the new Avengers game, the cheap knockoff Tony Stark. Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. All right. Um, Really, we just gotta plug everything else in and then we're done. Holy crap, it's on fire. But it's still kind of working, look at that. I am Iron Man. Now like I mentioned earlier in the video, we're actually using a focusing lens for the first time with this 100 watt blue laser diode. That means my focus changes based on where I'm standing. This particular lens has a focal point of one meter, which means hypothetically I should get the most concentrated laser beam at one meter. And if I go anywhere closer or further away, the beam's gonna get bigger. Pretty cool, right? Wow! That was sweet! <laughs> I'm sorry, little one. 
this is the way. Now this lasering's made me hungry. Let's make some popcorn. Well, that might be too hot. All right, maybe this isn't the best way to make popcorn. Ah! Jesus Christ, why is the laser still on? And that's not how you're supposed to use lasers. These are my favorite pants. I don't know if it was worth burning my leg for this. Not bad though. Speaking of things to burn, did you know not having honey is like burning money? To illustrate that, we're gonna have a little race. I'm gonna use my Iron Man Repulsor to burn these bills on the wall. Owen is gonna install honey, and once he's installed it, I'll stop using the Repulsor, and he can have whatever's left. You guys ready? Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Three, two, one, go! Wait, this is not, this is not real money. Well, no, that's fake money. But honey will save you real money. That's more like it. All right, that was freaking awesome. I feel like Iron Man. Now, just remember, we are trained professionals. Don't play with lasers. Any kind of laser, really. They're all very dangerous. I actually accidentally burned my leg, even though we were following all the proper safety procedures. Just goes to show, even professionals can mess up. Anyways, thanks to our sponsor, Honey, we're actually giving away one of these awesome helmets. Entering is super simple. All you have to do is get the Honey browser extension and enter our giveaway using the link below. Good luck.